Hi, would you like to learn more about hazard identification and some of the tools that we use to identify hazards, such as a job safety analysis, a material safety data sheet, or plant and equipment manuals? Then watch this video for more details. Hi, my name is Nicholas Graham, and welcome to series three in our vlog on hazard identification and risk assessment. In this series, we're going to be having a look at hazard identification. And just to refresh your memory, the definition of a hazard is, it is the source, situation, or act with the potential to cause harm. And remember, we're trying to prevent harm or prevent where we are not going to achieve the intended outcomes of our management system. And just to again calibrate, the intended outcomes of our management system would be to prevent injury and ill health, prevent pollution and environmental degradation, ensure that we meet the business and customer needs, ensure compliance to legal and other requirements, improve performance and continual improvement. That's what we want to achieve in the management system. This is one of the tools that we're going to use to structure our management system into achieving the intended outcomes. So. We're going to focus on hazard identification and in this vlog we're going to speak to you about sources of information, how to extract hazards from the discovery process issues that we identified in series two. Just to recap on series two, we had a look at the discovery process, we had a look at the context of the organization, how to identify all of those issues within your business that could result in sources of hazards such as activities, products, services, substances, where your sites are located, weather patterns, topography, tectonic plates, neighbors, social, cultural, political issues. There's a whole wide array of issues within your organization and its proximity and who's next door that could result in hazard sources. So we're going to take you through the job hazard analysis or JSA process. So we're going to take you where we've made a video of somebody who's performing a task on a drill press and we're going to show you how to create a JSA. We're going to show you, we're going to take you through a material safety data sheet and show you how to identify hazards on the material safety data sheet. We're also going to take you through a plant and equipment manual and show you how to identify or to extract the hazards from the information that has been provided to you by the supplier. So in these processes of identifying hazards, these are some of the hazard types that we're looking for as part of the hazard identification process. So if we're looking at an example of a person performing a job with a portable hand drill, we want to be looking at physical hazards. So physical hazards should be objects, slippery floors, noise, lighting, heat within the work environment. What are some of the chemical hazards that could be produced? Um, are there any solids? Are there particles? Are there dust? Are there fumes that are created by the drilling process? If I'm going to be drilling into metal, there may be fumes that are, are created. Are there any liquids, mists, dusts, or vapors, or any gaseous chemicals, acids, or alkalis? These will all be sources that could cause harm. We also want to look at ergonomic hazards. So how is the design and layout of your premises? Um, do your workers perform lots of manual handling, lifting, carrying, lift, uh, twisting? And what about repetitive actions where people have got to perform the same task over and over again that can place strain on the human body? We're also going to be having a look at mechanical hazards. So if I was using the drill or we're using the drill press, we've got moving machinery, we've got sharp moving uh, drill bits, we've got swarf that is created from the drilling process. Also electrical hazards, live electricity and static are all significant um, hazard sources which could cause serious injuries or fatalities. And also, last but not least, biological. So could your staff be exposed to viruses and bacteria? And a lot of people within factories or construction sites think, oh, you know, we don't deal with those type of issues. But if you've got rats on your site, rats can leave rat droppings, which can result in uh, a, a virus called leptospirosis. So there's a whole load of potential issues from biological risk exposures in your toilets or your shower areas, et cetera, that you're going to need to consider as part of the types of hazards and the, the tools that we're going to use to extract hazards from those issues that we identified 
during the discovery process. So let's go and have a look at a JSA, let's look at a material safety data sheet, and let's look at a plant equipment manual as a way of extracting hazards from activities, products, services, substances, plant and equipment. We found an effective source of information about hazards for a piece of equipment is the machinery and equipment manual. These manuals will provide you with general safety information about clothing, personal safety, how to work, where to work. They'll provide you with setup information and safety devices that are fitted to the equipment, how to fit the guard, how to fit the support handle on either side, how to ensure that the disc is fitted and tightened effectively, how to maintain the grinder, and also how to utilize it effectively and the angle in terms of operations and the various different machinery components. So a machinery and equipment manual can be a very effective source of information. Another and equally effective tool for identifying hazards is a job safety analysis. In short, a job safety analysis is a process of identifying the methodical steps relative to the use of a piece of equipment or a substance and the associated hazards. So as an example, again, for an angle grinder, check the cord integrity. Is it insulated? What are the hazards associated with that particular task? The hand could be cut on wire. So what are some of the controls relative to that is to wear leather gloves. Check conditions for the grinding wheel. Check the grinding wheel tightness. If that task or what are the hazards associated with that task, a hand injury from inadvertent starting. Do not plug the machine in would be part of the controls. So as an overview, a job safety analysis would identify the methodical steps associated with that piece of equipment, what hazards are associated with those steps, and what are the existing controls. Some organizations may utilize this as a method to identify what the existing controls are and also what some of the suggested controls are. So that's just an overview of a JSA. This is another tool that we've developed called a hazard and aspect checklist. It can be used by a team of individuals to observe a task to identify specific hazards. So the team will identify what some of the moving hazards are, the vehicles, fires and explosions, work environment hazards. So there's a little tick box, which is an aid memoir for identifying hazards relative to a process. On the back page of this, we print it back to back. On the back is where you would then summarize those particular hazards. And then in terms of the hierarchy of existing controls, identify what the hierarchy of controls are relative to those hazards. So it's another form of doing a JSA. And then you can have the participants to the hazard and aspect checklist sign off on the bottom. So that's just another tool that we've developed. Another source of hazard information for substances is the material safety data sheet. So here we have a look at a material safety data sheet for drain cleaner. Now here it's going to tell you exactly what the product is, the product name, what some of the active ingredients are, what some of the hazardous compounds are. The material safety data sheet will aid you in identifying hazards and precautions. So what some of the first aid measures are relative to the hazards. Firefighting measures, what to do in the event of accidental release, how to ensure safe handling and storage of the particular substance, the personal protective equipment and exposure controls, physical and chemical pro properties, stability and reactivity, toxicological information, ecological information, disposal considerations, what to consider for transportation, uh, regulatory information, and other information. So again, a material safety data sheet is a great source of hazard information for substances. Thanks very much for watching this series on hazard identification. Join us for series four, where we take those hazards and we take them through the risk assessment process.